I've had this pattern in my sewing queue for a year now, and today I finally whipped it up in this deep red rose print quilting cotton. I've linked a very similar fabric in the description below. This Romy blouse pattern from Seamwork is a beginner-friendly pullover top with a Peter Pan collar and front ties. It's a very pretty feminine design, perfect for all seasons. Let's sew it together now. Here are the wrong sides of both of my front bodice pieces, and I'm going to pin my darts. Sew your darts from the outside edge to the point, leaving thread tails at the point so you can tie them in knots. And then press your darts downward. Before I sew the shoulder seams attaching the front and back pieces, I'm going to finish the front and back pieces along the shoulders separately. Place the front and back pieces right sides together along the shoulder seams and pin in place. Sew these seams with a 5 8 inch seam allowance and press the seams open. I've gone ahead and applied interfacing to the wrong side of my upper collar piece. Now I'll place my upper and under collar pieces right sides together and pin the outside edges. And then sew the outside edges with a 3 8 inch seam allowance. I'm going to trim the seam allowance down by about half. Then I'll clip into the curved areas. Turn this collar piece right side out and give it a good press. Then we'll edge stitch around these sewn portions with about an eighth inch seam allowance. Baste the raw inner edges together. Fold your tie pieces in half right sides together. And we're going to sew the long edge and one short edge with a quarter inch seam allowance for both tie pieces. And then turn your ties right side out. Place the raw edges of each tie piece at the dots transferred to your front bodice piece, aligning the raw edges. Baste in place. Place the uninterfaced side of your collar right sides together with the neckline, aligning the center backs and pin in place. Place each of the outer edges of your collar 5 eighths of an inch away from the center front top edges of the bodice. and then continue pinning around the neckline. Baste the collar in place with a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Place the front bodice pieces right sides together and we're going to pin the center front seam. We're going to pin from the dot marking transferred from your pattern piece that's below the tie marking to the bottom of the hem. We'll sew from this dot to the bottom of the garment with a 5 8 inch seam allowance. Clip to the dot marking, careful not to clip through your stitches. Press this seam allowance open and finish both edges separately. I've applied interfacing to the wrong sides of my front facing pieces. Now I'm going to pin together at the lower edges, right sides together. Sew this bottom section of the facing from the lower dot transferred from your pattern piece to the bottom with a 5 8 inch seam allowance, back stitching to secure. Then just as we did along the bodice earlier, we're going to clip to the dot, careful not to clip through the stitching, and then press that seam open and finish the edges separately. I've applied interfacing to the wrong side of my back facing piece, place the front and back neck facings right sides together, pin the shoulder seams and sew with a 5 8 inch seam allowance, press the seams open. Finish the outer edges of your facing all the way around.
Place the facing right sides together with the neckline, aligning the shoulder seams and pin in place. Also pin at the edges of the center front. Then we'll pin at the bottom dot of the facing, aligning that dot with the dot at the center front of the bodice. Then continue pinning in between. We're going to sew the facing at two separate seam allowances. For the collar neckline area, we're sewing at a 3 8 inch seam allowance from dot to dot. And for these straight center front edges, we're sewing at a 5 8 inch seam allowance again from dot to dot. Now we're going to understitch this curved collar section, turning the facing over its seam allowance, sewing the facing to the seam allowance all the way around the collar area. Then we'll turn that facing to the inside of the garment then starting at the top of the center front where our ties are, we're going to sew straight down with a 5 8 inch seam allowance. Top stitching to the bottom of the garment. I've gone ahead and finished the side edges of my front and back pieces separately. Now I'm going to pin together the side seams on both sides. Sew each side seam with a 5 8 inch seam allowance and press the seams open. Sew basting stitches along the top of your sleeve from outer dot to outer dot. And also sew basting stitches along the bottom of the sleeve again from dot to dot. Leave tails of thread on both ends so you have threads to pull for gathering. I've applied interfacing using the interfacing pattern piece to the wrong side of my cuff. Now I'll fold this cuff piece in half wrong sides together to form a memory crease down the middle. Once I have that memory crease in place, I'll also press the interfaced long edge to the wrong side by 5 eighths of an inch. Place the unfolded raw edge of the cuff right sides together with the bottom of the sleeve and pin in place at the outer edges. Then pull your basting stitches so that the bottom of the sleeve fits the bottom of the cuff. Once it fits and the gathers are distributed evenly, pin in place. Sew the cuff to the bottom of the sleeve from one side to the other with a 5 8 inch seam allowance. Press your seam allowance down toward the cuff, and I've also gone ahead and finished those raw edges on both sides of the sleeves. Now I'll fold my sleeve right sides together, aligning those side edges, and I'm going to sew that seam with a 5 8 inch seam allowance. Fold the cuff along its pre-pressed lines so that that 5 8 inch pressed edge of the cuff sits right on top of the main stitching line and pin in place. Edge stitch that inner folded edge of the cuff all the way around with about an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Here is one of my armholes and I'm going to place my sleeve right sides together with the armhole aligning the underarm seams and pinning in place. I'll also pin at the remaining notches. Pull the basting stitches so that the sleeve fits into the armhole. Distribute the gathers evenly and pin in place, repeating on both sides of the shoulder seam. Sew the sleeve in place all the way around to the 5 8 inch seam allowance and then finish the raw edges.
Here's the bottommost edge of my garment and I've gone ahead and pressed the raw edges to the wrong side. I press them first to the wrong side by 5 eighths of an inch. Then I press the raw edges under so that they're folded under and concealed. Now I'm going to edge stitch close to the upper inner fold all the way around. And now your top is complete. Thank you for watching this sew along. Make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss future sewing tutorials and I'll see you in the next video.